It will be the return of Marcus Stroman, and who figured that we would ever be saying that? That is a very improbable vision you're looking at right there, Marcus Stroman. He was told you are done for the season. Right then, Marcus Stroman said, no way. I'll be back pitching in September, and here he is. The Stro Show. As emotional a pitcher as you'll see in all of baseball. Look at this. This is special, man. This, I got my whole family, my friends here, my brothers. It's, it's, it's crazy. I'm excited for the future. Many of you remember 2015. Stroman out for most of the year with a knee situation. Came back. Won four games in September, all against American League East opponents. Pitched beautifully in the playoffs, specifically game five against Texas, the Bautista bat flip game. He went six innings, gave up two. He'll go against Kevin Gosman tonight, who went five innings in Boston on Thursday. Now, a year earlier, 2014, Stroman was a rookie. So was Caleb Joseph. And lo and behold, one September night, at Camden Yards, they had a little bit of a disagreement on the field. In fact, to all of those who watched the Blue Jays at that time, you were basically the enemy. So let's go through that uh, situation. It was most intriguing, Caleb. Yeah, it, it was a play from the outfield, and I'm catching, all right? And remember, this new blocking the plate rules just instituted, so I'm trying to give him a lane. And look at Race is shaking that left hand. He said, I stepped on his hand. So what happened during Right after that play, he said, you stepped on my hand. What are you doing? You stepped on my hand. And I had a few choice words for him. I said, I didn't mean to step on your hand. And a couple innings Whoa. later, yeah, there we go. So that's old school baseball, right? So back in the day, teammates used to take care of it themselves. And I'll tell you what, right before that at bat, I asked Nick Marquez, I said, hey, do you think, do you think there might be something here? And he said, no, I don't think so. But remember, Burley pitched that game. Uh, look, it was an interesting night. The funny thing is, Jamie, last year, as fate would have it, we were teammates in New York. So it was really cool going to spring training, uh, getting to see him and kind of reminisce about it. We had a couple chuckles. We moved on pretty yeah. quick, but it was it was interesting. I so remember Showalter doing this. Yes. Shoot Such a line. visual. Yeah. But for a base runner, too, you're going in yeah. head first, and then you're going to complain about a catcher stepping on your fingers. Right? I mean, that makes no sense whatsoever. It, it, if you're going in head first, you may be putting your hands in peril. That was right. a bit of an emotional time. At least. Okay. Let's uh, send it off to the guys from SN Bets. Thank you, Jamie, Mike Mohorovic, and Anthony Bruno at the SM Bets Big Board, presented by Bet365. AB, the Blue Jays come into this second game with a wind in their sails, and as the guys have mentioned, a good matchup with Stroman. Mike, you can bet Stroman has had this series circled on his calendar for a long time, finally facing his former team for the first time. But the Blue Jays are a big favorite tonight at minus 225 on the money line. That tends to be the case when Kevin Gosman gets the ball. But Stroman has some drastic home road splits this season. At home, not good. But on the road, he's been awesome, posting a 208 ERA in 10 starts, Mike. Logan Webb's ERA from the beginning of the season to the end of July, 291. In August, 522. It's been a month to forget for the righty. His two rough August starts have come at the hands of the Tigers and the D-backs, and this Padres lineup obviously has a lot more pop. They've scored at least four runs in four straight games, so this over has hit, and when the Giants' bullpen takes over, they'll bring with them the fifth-worst ERA in baseball this season. The Seattle Mariners sit a half game ahead of the Blue Jays for the second wild card spot in the American League. And they're on the road in Detroit tonight facing Tigers righty Matt Manning, who's been lights out at home this season, allowing just two runs in 26 innings, while Mariners starter George Kirby has a 242 ERA over his last eight starts. So with both pitchers locked in right now, could be a low scoring game. Mookie Betts has a hit in all but five games this month, and none of those five were back-to-backs. It's worth noting he did not have a hit last night. His batting average on August 1st was 265. He's used a very strong August to get that up to 281. Taiwan Walker starts for the Mets. It's a small sample size, but Betts has a 500 average with one walk in nine plate appearances against Walker, A.B. One stat to keep in mind after the Blue Jays came back from 4-0 down last night, the Cubs actually lead Major League Baseball with 41 blown lead losses this season, nine more than the next closest team. 
Gosman versus Strowman tonight. Let's get this game going. Jamie, back to you. The Cubs really peppered the baseball last night. 14 hits. Nick Madrigal leads things off for them. Remember, he was a first round pick of the White Sox, traded to the Cubs for Craig Kimbrell. You don't see that very often. And was three for five a night ago, tagged at home by Jansen in the fifth. So that is the lineup for Chicago, brought to you by Bet365. All right. Joe Siddle has removed his shoes. Why? He's going to show you what Alejandro Kirk could have done a little differently sliding into second last night when we continue on Blue Jays Central. With Alejandro Kirk out of the lineup, Bo Bichette moves up a spot in the order as he and the Blue Jays face the Chicago Cubs tonight on Sportsnet. Swain, a soft ground ball, played at shortstop by Bogarts. Coming home with the plate at the plate. Biggio safe! Hands first slide by Biggio has the Blue Jays in front, six to five. Vladdy is running, and Guerrero's got his fifth stolen base on the season. They're going to contend that Vladdy came off the base, and he did. And they're challenging. Yes, he and did. They might overturn this one. And at second, safe is Kirk. Kirk's foot was up in the air and then came down on the bag. He's going to be out. You've just witnessed three slides in the last week that did impact Blue Jays results. And uh, here is Shoeless <laughs> Joe Siddle, Caleb Joseph, to go over um, some of the reasons why they're executed the way they are. It's interesting, the variety of different slides in Major League Baseball. Many different ways to slide, and it depends on what you're trying to do. We saw Cavan trying to avoid a tag at home plate. Base runners will go head first and manipulate their hands and do a little swim move if it means avoiding a tag. Vladdy was stealing a base, and it's important with replay now that you stay on the base. He came off just a bit. They called him on it. And with Kirk, it's a fielder's choice. It's a, it's a ground ball in the infield. You need to get from point A to point B as fast as possible directly to the base, not with your foot up above the base. You're the most recent player of the two. So, yes, in the replay era, you got to think about things. Oh, yeah, this is important, and it used to not be that important. If you beat the play, they would just call you safe. But now there's guys in that video room looking to see if your little shoelace came off the base. And look, if it costs the Blue Jays one game, how important was one game last year? So being have, and having good technique is so important. It, this seems to happen once a week that they're replaying some sort of slide. So if it costs the Blue Jays one game, it's worth noting, it's worth paying attention to. Okay, you're the infielder, you take the baseball. Joe is going to try and show us exactly how Kirk should have executed that slide last night. Give it your best shot, here we go. So, directly, right foot directly into the base. Yep. I popped up because that's where my momentum, my momentum took me, but more importantly, straight into the base, not up in the air, directly to get there as quickly as you can. Didn't compromise the trousers either. No, it didn't. That <laughs> you, was a really good slide. Yeah, would have done a little bit differently, but that was a good one. Heel in really hard. Yeah. I like to go really on the side, and especially with a contact play where I'm having to go A to B is super fast. I go in to the side and really try and dig down into it because the last thing you want is your weight to be back. If you go for the slide and you put your weight on the backside, this lead leg is going to come up. You've got to think about kind of going down, like torpedoing down into the base so that you hit and then boom, you are there and you stay straight up. It's like an amusement park around here. All we're missing are the uh, caramel apples. <laughs> and so are the Yankees these days, my goodness. They are struggling and you will see them tonight on Sportsnet 1 in Los Angeles. Currently enjoying a 9 and 17 month of August, if you can believe it. They've lost three in a row, despite the fact Aaron Judge hit number 50 a night ago. So that game is tonight on Sportsnet 1. Our game is coming up mere moments from now. It's beautiful in Toronto. Roof is open and Marcus Stroman is returning as a Cub. Stand by for first pitch and as always, thank you for watching Blue Jays Central. There are several fans in attendance tonight wearing Blue Jays jerseys with the name Stroman stitched on the back, and rightly so. Marcus Stroman returns as a member of the Chicago Cubs to face his old squad. Let's assess this one. Up to the broadcast booth we go. Dan Schulman is with Buck Martinez.
Jamie, Marcus Stroman had some awfully big moments in a Blue Jay uniform over parts of six seasons from 2014 through 2019. Some very memorable games, and he's back on the mound tonight, this time pitching for the other side. Yeah, he pitched some of the biggest games in most recent franchise history, and when you think about his career, number one pick in 2012, made it to the big leagues in 2014, but he made this start in 2016 in the wild card game right here at Rogers Center against Baltimore. And he was typical Marcus Stroman. He had everything working and he really baffled the Orioles over six innings, held them to just four hits and two runs. And we all know the outcome of this great game. But Stroman had the honor of starting that wild card game. Edwin Encarnacion, he finished it with a three-run home run and extra innings. But Marcus Stroman has had some great moments. In 15, he had the ACL. He injured himself in spring training. He worked so hard, came back and beat four American League East teams in September and also won a game in the playoffs that year. He said yesterday he feels half Canadian and he will always keep visiting Toronto and Canada because of his love for this country. He's on the mound, though, again on the other side tonight. This should be fun to watch, Dan. Uh, hot dogs are a loony tonight. So Joe, Caleb, and I are going to have our share and uh, sit back in and watch a game. Hope you enjoy it, too.